Thank you all for joining us for today's eLearning Lab webinar. I'm Mary Carnahan, Learning Resources Specialist with the Department of Education. And in just a few minutes, we're going to hear from Munster High School and what they're going to be telling us about their school-wide PBL project, Project Green. But first, I've got a few items to share. All of the lines were muted when you joined the meeting today. Please keep your line muted so that we don't have background noise during our webinar. We do have the chat available. You should see that on your screen. Um, if you don't, I believe you can click on the chat uh, bubble that's on the bottom of your screen. And use that chat throughout our call today to share questions, to ask questions of our presenters or each other, and also to share ideas and thoughts that you might have as we go through this call. You've got a great network of educators here on the call today, so utilize the resources that we have available to us. I'm recording the webinar, and I'll share the um, recording on our eLearning Lab YouTube channel and playlist um, by early next week. I will share the link to that channel in just a few minutes after we get started. On that channel, you'll find all of the webinars that, we've, that we have recorded in the past. So that is a really great resources, a really great resource. We've covered a lot of topics over the last several years of our eLearning Lab webinars. We do award a PGP for each of our webinars, so I will send out certificates for those by early next week, and I will get the email addresses for those from the registration that you all completed today when you joined the meeting. This webinar is part of the professional development opportunities that we have. Um, we have another webinar that is coming up in a couple of weeks, Design Principles for eLearning Days. Our, one of our newest staff members, Jennifer Watson, is going to be leading that webinar. So you can um, link to register for that from the website that's there on the screen. You can't click on that, but um, if you copy that down, I'll also include that website um, in the chat in just a few minutes. Also, an ongoing form of professional development and communication that we have is Twitter, and we are um, we are on Twitter at INE Learn. But there's also a whole network of educators um, across the state and even the country utilizing the INE Learn hashtag daily. So check that out. Use that to connect with other educators. There are also Twitter chats every Thursday night, and this week's chat is going to be moderated by um, Caitlin Krauss, who is an author, and she is actually an Indiana Compu Connected Educator Conference Spotlight Speaker. So we are happy to have her on the uh, Twitter chat this week talking about mindful design. So check that out if that sounds interesting to you. And now we are ready to connect with Munster High School to hear from them about their school-wide PBL project, Project Green. And I'm going to turn it over to Principal Mike Wells and his team. They're going to introduce themselves in just a moment, but I'm going to turn the presentation over to them. As I do that, um, you that drop down send to everyone message may change um, from everyone to them. So please um, make sure that you select send to everyone for your comments so that we can all see what you're sharing in the chat. So Mike and team, you guys should be ready to share your presentation and unmute your line. Well, welcome to Munster High School, everyone. My name is Mike Wells. I'm the principal at Munster High School. We're about 30 minutes outside of uh, the city of Chicago, and we're really excited to uh, present Project Green to you and the, the pathway that we've taken within the last two years. Currently, we're in year three of our Project Green, 
and we're excited to share the progress that we've made um, with Project Green. As I said, I'm Mike Wells, the principal, presenting with us today are several people, our career and tech ed coordinator, Brad Doctor, science teacher, Larry Housinger, Peggy Metanic, English teacher and theater arts teacher, our auditorium director, Ray Pallas, and our AP computer science teacher, uh, Mrs. Kim Pyrick. And then on the back end, we have our media specialist assisting with the chat, uh, Mrs. Kelly Laddick. So those are the people that will be speaking today, and we have a lot of things to share, so we're gonna jump right into the presentation. So we've had over 300 students and many teachers uh, participate in the three to five year interdisciplinary project that we've uh, termed Project Green uh, thus far. Uh, so when we were deciding to go through the advanced ed STEM certification process, um, we were concerned about a, a specific indicator, which is 1.6. If you look at the bottom of this slide, there's a yellow link and at your leisure, you can go to this yellow link and it will highlight the process that we went through to go through the STEM certification uh, process through Advanced Ed, uh, which oversees over 32,000 schools in the United States. Uh, so we were the first high, actually first school in Indiana to be Advanced Ed STEM certified and 13th high school in the United States uh, to reach this milestone. So as I said, we were concerned with indicator 1.6. In the advanced ed process, the indicator states, the interdisciplinary problem is a problem-based curriculum which includes a focus on real world application. So as you know, if you're a high school teacher or someone in the high school realm listening to this right now, you'll know that teachers uh, teach in silos, so to speak, in a high school. Uh, where they're kind of focused on their content or a skills-based class, if it's English, language, arts, arts. So we needed to uh, kind of come up with an interdisciplinary project where all uh, disciplines were involved in this project. And to be frank, we were a little worried about meeting the certification qualifications for Indicator 1.6, which is the in interdisciplinary project. So what does it involve? It involves science education, art, entrepreneurship, engineering, computer science, health and wellness, and then finally giving back to the community, which you'll hear about towards the end of the presentation. Again, if you're interested in finding out about the advanced ed STEM certification process, you can look at the indicators which are listed in the yellow link at the bottom of the screen. Uh, I am going to skip this video, but it'll be in the chat window at the bottom of the screen. There's uh, some technical problems with uh, WebEx being able to keep up with the video. Um, our students put together a really neat four minute video highlighting of where we've been with Project Green so far. And uh, this actually was our planting day, uh, which you'll hear more about in the presentation as well. As a team, we meet periodically, the team being the people that are presenting here, in addition to other teachers, and we come up with uh, vision statements and goals, and we do some progress monitoring with the goals as well. So um, if you look at the screen that's displayed in front of you, we've met all of the goals in year one, which is designing a rainwater collection system. We built raised garden beds, we planted vegetables and we provided a bounty table for the staff in year one as well. Uh, we wanted to start small scale. Obviously when you're planning something that has a five year timeline, you wanna make sure that you do things right and you meet and attain the goals that you set uh, on, a, on, a, on a timetable as we move forward. So year two to three, we've also met these goals and we're working towards uh, the bottom community dinner and ceramics that are gonna be built, uh, used for the community dinner. But our AP computer science kids have coded and our teacher will talk more about that. We've created a garden automation system and we're in the process of planning the community dinner which will happen on October 5th. And I know Mrs. Metanic and Mr. Pallas will talk 
more about that later in the presentation. And finally, uh, one of the main goals that we want to do in year three to five is create business models and also a farmer's market by creating uh, a project-based learning program. And those of you are, that are familiar with Grad Pathways know that bucket two, uh, you have to have a class or a service-based project or a work-based project, but this meets the bucket two requirement, which is creating a business model uh, for a farmer's market in year three through five. This past year, we had two botany classes with around 20 kids in each class to participate in Project Green. The kids really enjoyed working with their hands to get their hands dirty. They did find the experience rewarding when they saw the food product they produced, as well as the flowers they were able to give to the parents and staff. Word did get around, and as a benefit of the enthusiasm of the last uh, year's students, we have noticed that this year, the number of students taken botany jumped to three classes with around 60 students totally participating. In our greenhouse, we grew both vegetables and flowers. The vegetables included tomatoes, onions, carrots, green beans, and radishes. We also grew flowers like impatiens, zinnia, marigolds, and petunias. The onions and carrots were provided to the faculty for consumption. One staff member made a carrot cake and shared it with a class. Cherry tomatoes were grown and given to the staff so they could have tomatoes throughout the summer. The carrots and tomatoes were a success story. We struggled with our onions and beans. One of the goals of this year's class is to try to determine a reason why the yields are so low for these vegetables. Also this year, the plan is to grow a mounding variety of tomato, and we're going to try to grow some baby potatoes as well. We also are, are very proud to include our exceptional needs students in the program in Project Green. As I said, over 300 students have been involved so far, and our exceptional needs students are no exception. So they enjoy going into the greenhouse, watering, tending to the plants, and also going into the orchard, which is a later stage uh, pro uh, part of the project, which you'll hear more about later. We uh, are, are extremely proud of not only just including high school students in Project Green, but we've kind of uh, commissioned the elementary schools to be a part of planting vegetables and then transplanting them here at the high school as well. The robotics team were instrumental in planting the vegetables and transplanting them from Eads Elementary over here at the high school. Here's a few pictures of our uh, students planting the vegetables at the elementary school, and then, as I said, transplanting them back at the high school later on. Then as part of this interdisciplinary project, the art students also drew and painted the conceptual drawing of the orchard layout. And then our civil and architectural engineering classes took measurements of the orchard and used their CAD software to create the scale rendering of the orchard. And as you can see, they did a beautiful job with uh, some of the the final product that will display by our orchard that's planted in the center courtyard. On March 30th, we partnered with uh, Purdue, which has a master gardener there in the front. Her name is Nikki Witkowski. She was instrumental in uh, helping us achieve a grant to plant 30 fruit trees in our center courtyard, 10 cherry trees, and then also 10 uh, pear trees, in addition to 10 raspberry bushes. So she's working closely with us as a, a master gardener and advising us on what to do with the plants that we've planted in the main orchard. And uh, March 30th, we had a huge contingency. This is just some of the kids and adults that showed up. Uh, the Munster Garden Club showed up. Planting Possibilities, another organization that we partnered with, and uh, Master Gardener Nikki, who came out and planted the 20 trees and 10 berry bushes as well. Uh, we also, when we were doing the planting day, had some drone footage 
and you can see some of the uh, activities that were going on in the center courtyard uh, that, of, the, of the fruit trees that were being planted. The center courtyard is kind of the final scale product. Uh, we use the, the smaller courtyard as a test model, which you'll hear more about and see more pictures of coming up here in some later slides. Various students from a variety of disciplines were involved in the development of our science courtyard garden. Activities range from building raised beds to designing, constructing, and automating a state-of-the-art rainwater collection and watering system. One of our students designed and constructed the three raised beds used for planting in the science courtyard as his Eagle Scout project. Another student designed and built the stands for the water collection barrels as part of his Eagle Scout project. The stands had to be built in a certain area of the courtyard with specific height specifications to best incorporate the existing drainage system. The rain collection bar barrels in the courtyard are used to water the three raised beds. The water process was automated by a web-based app created by coding a Raspberry Pi component utilizing Python and Java programming language to allow for on-demand watering of the plants with a click of a button. As this project continues, one of the problems we still face is the fact Project Green isn't totally green yet. We still use power off the grid to work the water regulators as well as the farm bot. This we plan to address this year with the installation of a windmill. The windmill will generate power to be stored in batteries until it's required by our equipment. Our physics classes will be working on this problem. Now, the farm bot, this is, uh, was built by our robotics team, and this is our automation. This allows to program in exactly where the seedlings will go, and we can water and monitor uh, using the coding from the AP science classes. When a uh, foreign object is detected by the farm bot, it has the capability to pull the weed uh, and also monitor the, the water, the water, the pH of the water and the moisture content in the soil. And the device that you can see on the right will move in a linear fashion and water the plants that are planted in the raised bed. As Mike Wells said earlier, um, one of the final pieces in uh, years two to three is a community dinner. And the Rotary Club here in Munster uh, secured a grant from their national organization to help sponsor a dinner, a community dinner, uh, featuring a menu that was designed by our cooking classes last year. Um, and it, the recipes are all inspired by the foods that are being grown on the campus. Obviously, right now, the, the fruit trees and bushes aren't bearing uh, fruit just yet, um, so they'll have to actually go buy those for the time being. But um, it's all based off of what is being uh, grown here on campus. And it's being held prior to a performance of the Munster Theater Company's musical, The Adams Family, which is coming up in a few weeks. So it's creating a dinner theater style event for the community. And in addition, the technical theater classes that Peggy Botanic is running has been working on not only work for the set for the show, but also decor for the cafeteria the night of the event. These are some of the students who were working on the recipes. There were contests run, taste testings run, so that the very best recipes could be chosen for the community dinner. This is the menu that was designed by one of the committees in the tech theater class. All of these menus will be displayed for the community on the dinner. It features everything that will be served that evening. Those classes have also worked to not only create an ambiance in the cafeteria, but also a display in the lobby to make the dinner theater experience truly that, an experience, not just another night at the theater. As you can see by this checklist, <clears throat> and listening to Mike say, we've had over 300 students involved already. On, three, on year three of our Project Green, through years one, two, and three, we have included the engineering, art, ceramics, science, botany, computer programming, physics, health, theater, culinary arts, and our special needs classes, as well as the robotics club 
and two Munster Eagle Scouts to continue this project. In addition to these classes, through years three and five, we will begin to incorporate the business and entrepreneurship classes to create the business plan and to market our final product to a local farmer's market. So again, as you can see, uh, as Mr. Doctor talked about, these are the student groups that have participated in Project Green thus far. Um, we, we're really proud of the amount of kids and the types of students who are working through this project and we just anticipate as we evolve, as this project evolves, more and more students within the school are going to be participating in Project Green. So overall, you know, we were a little leery and we had no idea that the project would evolve to where it is right now, but it's been an extremely successful um, doing and more and more students are becoming involved as the months uh, wear on. So again, we would be happy to share any ideas with you or if you have any questions, we'd be happy to answer them. But when we started this, I'll be honest with you, back in April of 2017, we had no idea that the project would evolve to where it's at right now. And we're excited about the project and, and we're extremely pleased with the results that we're getting, not just here in Munster High School, but the community that has embraced the project with the various organizations that are, are, are a part of this. And in this screen right here, you could see some of the organizations that have been a part of it, not just within the school, but outside of the school. And these are the partnerships that we've um, partnered with thus far. Uh, so I think we've been keeping track of some questions here and we'll do the best that we can to answer them. The first question is, uh, what should a school do to get started? So that's a great question. And what I would recommend is uh, you, you don't know what project to start with until you kind of know where you're at. So when we went through the STEM certification process, we wanted to find out, and I know the, the DOE is uh, revamping their certification process as well. So whatever route you choose to go through, um, I would wait to find out what the recommendations are from the committee who kind of oversee that certification process. So what should a school do? I think that they need to find out where you're at, get a baseline first, and then make a decision about what's best for you. This is not a one size fits all type of suggestion for every school, but I would kind of look at what your school's needs are or what your, your kids are interested in and what your teachers are, uh, wanna go on board with as well. Another way to look at it is find a problem, solve it. Um, if there's a problem in the community that can include a lot of different areas within the community, within the school, that's a good way to get started too and maybe just start brainstorming and to see how we can go about fixing or solving that problem. The next question is uh, taking into consideration what MHS has learned through this process, what advice would you give to other schools? I think the best advice I would give is uh, learn from your failures. You know, the first part of this is when we describe the 2D art Conceptual, conceptual drawing of the water coloring that you saw, you know, they actually drew it as a mirror image of what the courtyard actually looks like. And when I saw that, I was, you know, people were disappointed, but I'm like, that's awesome. I'm glad they drew it as a mirror image because through this whole process, we've never done this before and we're learning from our mistakes. And that's what science is all about. And that's what engineering is all about is as you go through the process, you're not gonna have everything perfect because this is something like we're leading kind of the pack as far as uh, going through this project green, but we're learning ourselves and we're learning from our mistakes. So when we meet as a team and talk about goal setting and progress monitoring, we look at how we've maybe not met our goals and, and, and it failed in some respects, but we kind of regroup and uh, refocus and problem solve as a team within our interdisciplinary team and then within the students as, as well. 
The next question is, how do your students feel about participating in Project Green? I'm gonna let some of the teachers that are here kind of talk about that because they're in the trenches with the kids and they've heard more comments uh, working with the kids. The Tech Theater kids are excited beyond belief about the possibility of actually doing something for public performance. Uh, they're actually competing with each other. My lobby committee and my cafeteria committee are competing with each other to see who actually can make the best displays. The people who are working backstage are working really hard to make sure that the set looks its absolute best and they want to outdo both the other committees. But they are very, very excited about the fact that people are actually going to come to see what they do. And they can't wait for it to all come together. I think we have a couple more questions that are coming in here. So the question is, how did Project Green fit into the regular school day? Uh, as, as I said, you know, in the beginning when we were um, uh, talking about high schools in particular, uh, it's it, teachers like to, the, they teach in silos. So you really have to kind of get a team on board that want to, when I was going through uh, this process with advanced ed, I wanted to make sure that we had buy-in from our teachers. So I didn't just say, hey, we're going through this and we're going to be an advanced ed STEM certified school. You have to get your school on board. And I had to present it to our superintendents, the central office as well. I, I presented to them uh, for three hours um, and they were in full support of it. And when they were in full support of it and I had teachers that were in support of it, uh, then we decided as a team, let's go out to a couple conferences to see what we need to do as a team to embark on this process. So we went to the uh, Purdue uh, STEM uh, conference, which is upcoming here, I believe in January. It's the fifth annual conference. We got some ideas from them, uh, came back as a team, debriefed, and then we ultimately decided, hey, yes, Munster High School wants to embark on this process of the STEM certification uh, process. And then once we received the recommendations from advanced ed, we kind of uh, move forward with our next steps, which Project Green was the evolving factor that uh, allowed us to move forward with it. I think a, just a final closing comment. Um, high schools, it, it's a little bit more challenging to do something like this as an interdisciplinary project. Um, as I've gone through some of these conferences and seminars, it's a lot easier for elementary schools to engage in a uh, certification process or to become uh, a STEM type of a school. Uh, but we don't, we don't want to exclude the humanities. We, we think that they're just as important or equally as important as STEM. And like Mrs. Matanik has talked about, the English language arts and the uh, art students with ceramics have, have been a huge part of, of being a part of the STEM project. Again, finally, if you get a chance, I know Ms. Laddick is putting the video in the chat window at the bottom of the page. Um, it's a four minute clip of two of our students who put the video together. Francis and Cynthia did an outstanding job Cynthia was a national qualifier for speech and debate, and Francis wants to produce new movies. And they did an outstanding job with drone footage, uh, highlighting in four minutes of what Project Green really means to our community and to our school. So again, I thank, I thank you for listening, and I'd be more than happy to answer any questions that you may have uh, with the email that's displayed on the screen. Thank you very much. Thank you. One question that I had, and you may have touched on this. I know you talked about your community partnerships. Did you guys do anything with your um, like middle schools or elementary schools? And if you touched on this, I apologize if I missed it. Yeah, so uh, we, 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 we included the elementary schools with the initial planting. So they planted the seeds in those little uh, seedling pots, and they grew them within the classrooms, and then they put them in the beds that were in the video that uh, we were showing through the PowerPoint. 
And once they were large enough, we went over to the elementary schools and transplanted those plants, whether it be into our greenhouse or the raised beds that you saw in the, in the smaller courtyard. Middle school, they haven't been as involved as the elementary schools. Yeah, and I did I did miss that part. I remember hearing about the transplanting, but I missed where they had started. So that's very cool. And not knowing about this project before the webinar, I loved it because as you guys kept going and talked about this group did this and this group did this and the Eagle Scout kids did this and the robotics, like I just kept thinking, oh, my gosh, I, why didn't I think of that? And, oh, my gosh, why didn't I? So that's, th those are just some amazing partnerships that you guys have had and um, including the – um, entire school in this. So thank you very much for sharing. Um, have any other questions come in on your end? No, not, we have not any other questions. Okay. Well, if there are no other questions, I really want to thank the Munster High School team for sharing with us today um, some really great information. And hopefully this will be a little um, spark for everybody who's listening in um, to do a really cool school-wide PBL. Um, and like, like the presenter said, just finding a problem in your community and solving it, um, coming up with different subject areas and different um, groups to work on that. So, um, and thank you to Mr. Wells and the team. Thank you for sharing your email address there. If anyone has questions, please reach out to him um, and, and We'll love to see connections made from this um, webinar. So thank you all for joining us today, and enjoy the rest of your Tuesday.